This video is going to be about the cytoskeleton. So the cytoskeleton is an extremely important component of our cells because without it, our cells uh, wouldn't be able to uh, keep themselves from collapsing on themselves. And so uh, it's also really important in uh, intracellular trafficking, so moving things from one part of the cell to another, so it plays a big role in the endomembrane system, which we talked about in another video. Um, so let's just get into what makes up the cytoskeleton. So you have three different kinds of filaments that are going to uh, make up the cytoskeleton. So the first one is going to be microtubules. So microtubules are the largest of the three filaments in the cytoskeleton. So they're gonna be made up of tubulin, uh, which are um, globular proteins. But the tubulin that makes up the microtubules is actually a dimer, which means it's two tubulins that are connected to one another. And that dimer is made up of one alpha tubulin and one beta tubulin. So they'll make that dimer, and those dimers will come together to form the larger microtubule. So also the microtubule um, it has two ends, right? And so one end is going to be different from the other end. So um, at one end, you're going to have uh, the ability to rapidly add and remove tubulin dimers. So that's going to be um, polymerization and depolymerization. And that end uh, where you can rapidly add and remove dimers is called the plus end. And then the minus end is going to be the end where it's more difficult to add things and take things off, so it's not going to change as quickly. So in our cells, microtubules typically grow out from an organelle called the centrosome, or not an organelle, but a location in the cell called the uh, centrosome. And then within the centrosome, you have something called a centriole. Um, and so centriole is a, it's a ring of nine um, microtubules, and then from there, everything else is going to grow out to generate the rest of the microtubules in our cells. So moving on to the second largest filament, that's going to be our intermediate filaments. So intermediate filaments are um, a little harder to understand because they, um, unlike the microtubules and the microfilaments, when we get to those, intermediate filaments aren't made up of a particular uh, protein. So they have a variable composition. So they can be a lot made up of a lot of different things depending on where they are in the cell, uh, what kind of cell it is, so where that cell is in our body. So a lot goes into uh, defining how these intermediate filaments are going to look. Um, so intermediate filaments, they are um, not as dynamic as microtubules and microfilaments. So you're not going to have really as much rapid uh, polymerization and depolymerization like you see in some of these other filaments. So finally, the last filament are going to be our microfilaments. So microfilaments are going to be made up of actin. Um, so actin is, again, it's a globular protein. So what actin is actually going to do is it's going to um, arrange itself into chains. And then two of these chains will wrap themselves around one another. So they make kind of this spiral of actin monomers, um, and that makes up the microfilaments. So similarly to microtubules, uh, actin filaments are also going to have a plus end and a minus end. So at the plus end, you're going to have the rapid polymerization and depolymerization of this microfilament, which makes microfilaments very dynamic uh, filaments. So um, some places you might see these different filaments, so microtubules, they're really important in cilia and flagella. Um, so those are going to be appendages that you have on cells that are going to help uh, with motility and allow those cells to be able to move around. Uh, microfilaments, you see microfilaments a lot in um, cell to cell junctions, so things like um, uh, desmosomes, um, tight junctions even, hemidesmosomes. A whole host of different cellular junctions have actin filaments. So actin filaments are also really important in something called cytoplasmic streaming. And so basically what that is, is as these actin filaments um, polymerize and depolymerize, that's going to cause the cytoplasm to kind of move. So when we look at a cell uh, really close up with a really high powered microscope, we can actually see the cytoplasm kind of circulating around within the cell. And so that's the cytoplasmic streaming, and that's happening because of the polymerization and depolymerization of the microfilaments. So moving on to something that you'll see um, a lot with the cytoskeleton is the concept of motor proteins. 
So motor proteins uh, are pretty much, they do what the name implies, they're um, motors that help move things around the cells. So a really important motor protein um, in our cells is myosin. Um, and so that motor protein is gonna be really important with microfilaments. And actinomycin, I'm sure that sounds familiar from muscle contraction, because that's another place that we see these two um, proteins working together. But we also have uh, different kinds of myosin, which are motor proteins that are going to have one end attached to the uh, microfilament, and then the other end will be attached to a vesicle or a protein or whatever it is that that uh, motor protein is supposed to be moving. And so what will happen, let's say this is our actin filament. So here's our vesicle and this is our motor protein. So what will happen is through um, binding and hydrolyzing ATP um, and GTP, these um, components right here of this motor protein will be able to move. And so it essentially looks like they're walking along the microfilament and they'll do that over and over again until they get that vesicle to wherever it needs to go. And so we also have motor proteins for microtubules, um, but they're not as common as um, motor proteins for the microfilament. So myosin is a really big motor protein you need to know, and that one's for microfilaments specifically. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true regardless of what biology course you're taking. However, the material we covered in this video is specifically referencing material covered in Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building, and you can schedule a free 30-minute appointment to have one-on-one -on -one tutoring online, or you can stop by during any of our business hours. For more information about the services we provide, you can go to our website at www.baylor.edu tutoring. Thank you.